Hey everyone, uh, today I'm going to be making a repair to my Weber Genesis E310 barbecue grill. And uh, while I've got it apart, I'm going to be doing some cleaning up as well. So I thought I'd shoot this video. I tried to find a video online to show how to uh, do the repair I'm going to do. And I couldn't find it anywhere, so I thought I'd just go ahead and make one. Uh, the issue that I'm having with the grill is that it's five years old now. And the igniter is no longer igniting one of the uh, the far right burner. It ignites the other ones fine, but the far right one, it's not igniting uh, at all or very well. So I'm going to be fixing that, replacing some parts. And, um, and while I've got it torn apart, I'm going to go ahead and give it a deep clean. So I thought I'd uh, share some of this information with you. I'm going to be digging into the grill pretty deeply so any kind of repair that you might have to do you'll, you'll see how to gain access to all the controls and burners and, and everything else um, for the purposes of this video I've actually already taken it apart and I've already completely cleaned it so and all the hardware is out all the screws and so forth so that'll help the video go a little bit faster um, and I'm not going to completely reassemble it because I'm still waiting on a couple of parts to come, but you'll get the gist of, of what we got going on here. So first things first, um, I'm gonna show you some of the supplies that, that you'll probably need uh, to do what I'm, what I'm gonna do today. So um, this is a pretty dirty job or can be, depending on how dirty your grill is and how often you use it. So first things first is get some uh, grubby clothes on. I've got my trusty Kiss t-shirt that I worked with. Um, you know, maybe a, a dirty apron that you want to put on to keep yourself clean. Um, I always like having a box of gloves around. When it comes time to actually clean and wash this thing, um, easy off. Uh, depending on how dirty your grill is, just to put it in perspective, I went through almost three cans of easy off to clean my grill and all the other components because it gets... It gets a lot of use, and so there's a lot of grease and, and grime in there. So you're going to want easy off. Uh, eventually, when you go to wash it, you know, bucket with some miscellaneous scrub brushes and so forth. I like using the scrub brushes that uh, that are not abrasive because it does have some painted surfaces and some stainless steel, and I don't want to scratch it. So here's uh, here's one kind. They sell a bunch bunch of different kinds, but some non abrasive. Um, scrubbing pad uh, just some mild soap this is uh you'll see what i'm going to use this for later a squirt bucket or excuse me a squirt um what do you call this thing you know what i'm talking about one of these can't talk today one of these with uh, water and soap in it helps uh, let's see later on when i go to clean it up i'm gonna maybe try a little of this stainless steel cleaner on some of the parts so I've got that. As far as tools go, uh, well, you're gonna eventually need your garden hose somewhere nearby, some sorted rags. Um, I have this little magnetic dish that I use, so it's got all my hardware in it. In case I trip and knock it over, I'm not gonna spill screws all over the place and lose things. Um, just some basic tools. I've got a wire brush, a flat tip screwdriver, and a Phillips screwdriver, a small, screwdriver, pair of pliers, and some assorted uh, scrapers. I'm also using uh, one of these kind of Scotch-Brite. This one's old and I've used the heck out of it, but one of these Scotch-Brite uh, pads, sanding pads. And then later on, I'm going to be using, uh, this is not necessary, but I tend to overkill on some things. This is some uh, engine assembly lube that's got anti-seize properties. I'll show you why I'm going to use this later. And this Permatex dielectric grease is specifically for electronic components. And I'll show you what I'm going to do with this later as well. And then I like to have some cardboard uh, around, some pieces of cardboard. Again, this job gets pretty dirty, so I use that to lay down some of the components. I'm in my garage right now since I've already got this cleaned and taken apart. But normally I would have this outside, you know, either a lot of cardboard or, or, or some tarps down 
and um, uh, or or pull it into your grass. You can you can do it there if you do, if you don't mind some of that gunk getting in your grass. But I'm already clean and torn down, so I've rolled into the garage where I have access to my tools. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, the first thing I, I like to do is take the top off. You don't have to do this, but it just makes it easier gain access to, to what you're looking for. So in the back on each corner right here is a place on the hood and a place on the body, a hole where this pin will go through that hole. I think they call this a clevis pin if I'm not mistaken. It's got a head on it and I don't know if you can see it, but it's got a hole on the tip here. And once you slide that clevis pin through the hood and the body of the grill, you lock it in place with a cotter key. So using my pliers, I've already pulled the cotter key out and I've pulled the pin out on each side. So now my grill top easily pops right off and it's just out of the way while we do our work. Okay. The other thing um, that I like to do is I like to take the doors off. There's a, a plate underneath here, underneath your control panel, that needs to come out, and it's easier to clear. And the whole thing is just easier to work on if the doors are off, and you're not uh, when you go to clean it, you're not getting all that grease and stuff all over the doors. So the doors come off pretty easy, easily. I'm going to show you that here in a second. Um, I'll give you a close up of that. Now this bottom pan already came off, so I'll show you what that's all about. At the top of the hinge of the door, there's a slot, and you can put a small screwdriver inside that slot, and you can just kind of pull down. Uh, there's a there's like a spring in, inside there, and it releases the top pin on the hinge. And here's what I'm talking about. There's a slot. There's the top pin for the hinge, and I know it's kind of hard to see, but there's a little metal rod in there. Uh, and if you just stick your screwdriver at the top and push down on it, it pushes that pin down. So then the top of the door can pivot away and you just lift it off the bottom hinge. So that's pretty simple. Um, so I've got both of my doors off. I like to have both of my doors off because it makes it easier to get this plate off. This plate is up underneath your controls. Let me adjust the camera a little bit. Underneath your control panel here, is this this cover plate and take notice that it's got some uh, piece of the edge is bent and cut here so it kind of slides in and locks into the bottom of the front panel so I'm not going to take the camera upside down just take a good look at it before you take it out and you'll see how it goes in there but it's basically up under here and on each side there's just a Phillips screw on each side Take that Phillips screw out on both sides, and this panel drops down and out of the way. So we can move that, set that aside. Uh, you need to take all your knobs off. Um, go ahead and take each knob off. I've got them all off now. This is your igniter. Uh, the cap just unscrews and comes right off. If you're having igniter problems and you don't know it, there's a battery inside there, so that would be the first thing to check would be the battery, um, but that just unscrews, that cap unscrews, and you can set that aside. There's a plastic screw here that you can unscrew. Mine was kind of tight and I had to use a pair of channel locks just to loosen it up a little bit or a pair of pliers. I'm gonna loosen it up, but I'm not gonna take it all the way out quite yet. Um, let's see, I've got my top uh, rack here that just kind of pops off and out of place. So I'll set that aside. Of course, the burner grills are here. We'll get those out of the way. Okay, inside the grill, well, before we move on to that, um, let me talk a little bit about your igniter here. Um, this is the igniter mechanism, and I'm gonna be pulling that out of the way. So I'm going to take that, that retaining plastic retaining nut off, off of there. When you put it back on, you don't have to crank down on it. You don't want to break it. Really, just a good hand tight is good enough. Now, when this comes out of here, when your igniter comes out of here, just kind of take a mental note as to how, it was, how it's in there. And if I pull it and set it aside, you'll see that it's got a flat 
part here, flat metal part. That flat metal part is facing to the right. And the hole where the stem comes through is kind of a D-shaped hole. So it's kind of hard to get it in there wrong, but just kind of take note of the direction it's supposed to be in. What Weber did real nice on the back of these things is they color coded the different wires. Um, so blue and the, and, the, and the corresponding spot on the igniter. So it's kind of hard to get it wrong. I took the extra step of taking a Sharpie and marking on here. There's four terminals. I only have one connected right now. As I said, I've got this apart. Um, so I marked on here left, right, middle to indicate the various burners. And GM, there's a ground, and that ground goes to the middle. Once you've got that marked, you know where it's going to go. You can just unplug these, and you can set your igniter aside. This front plate comes off. There's underneath here on, in the back on each corner, there's one Phillips screw on each side. Once you have that Phillips screw uh, taken out, you just lift this up, kind of tilt it away from the controls, and there you have it. So your front uh, control panel is completely out of the way. Um, back inside the grill, you've got these things that just lift right out. These are called flavor bars. I don't know why they call them flavor bars, but nonetheless, my grill has five of them. There's one that covers each burner inside the grill, and then one that goes between the burners for a total of five. This is something I'm gonna replace. Um, it's made of, of metal and covered in porcelain, and it's five years old, and you can see there's a lot of rust. They sell these in stainless steel, so I've ordered a set in stainless steel. I'm gonna go ahead and replace these and get rid of the rusty old ones. Now we've got our burner exposed here, and underneath the burner are these, what they call heat shields, that just lift out. It's easy to lift these things out when the burners aren't in place. When the burners are in place, you gotta just kinda snake them out of there. These are called heat shields. They're also metal covered in porcelain, but because they're underneath the burners and not in the direct flame, these have held up pretty well. Again, these are five years old, so I'm not gonna replace these. They're not all rusty and beat up. I'm gonna go ahead and continue using these. So I'm gonna pull those out and get those out of the way. Now, again, I have a three burner grill, so normally you would see the three burners there. But before we go any further and taking anything else apart, this is a good time to do any kind of uh, gas leak checks or anything you wanna do there. So my grill happens to be natural gas, propane's the same way. I have a long uh, hose that comes out the back of the grill and I'm gonna inspect that and make sure it's in good shape and not cracked and so forth. That hose goes into the back of the grill and I don't know if you can see it, but uh, maybe you can see it if I slide this out of the way. Down inside here is, is just a connection and you can get to it from the front of the grill, from inside. There's just a connection where this rubber hose connects to a metal line, and then this metal line comes out here, out the face of the grill, and attaches to this bar. Where that connection, uh, hose, where the rubber hose connects to the metal line, you can check there for any leaks. You can check where the metal hose connects to this bar. And this bar assembly is what they call the, man um, excuse me, the manifold. The gas comes through the rubber hose, connects to the hard line. The hard line, uh, metal line connects to the manifold. Gas flows through this square tube at the front into the individual valves, out the valves and into the burner. So if you have any concern that you might have a leak anywhere, this would be the time to check that. Connect the gas, turn the gas on, and using, I've heard people argue that you can have the flame lit or you can just turn the gas on. Obviously, if you have the gas on without the flame lit, you know, you don't want it on for a long time. You're gonna have gas fumes. You wanna be in a well-ventilated area and not obviously be smoking or lighting a match or anything like that as well. So what you can do, this is where the spray bottle comes in and some soap. You get a soapy uh, water mixture in your spray bottle and what you can do is you can spray with the gas on, you can spray uh, your connections. So first of all I would have the gas, I would have your, your uh, valves 
off in the off position so that you have gas pressure inside the system. You can spray the connectors here. You can spray the connector where the rubber hose and gas line come together underneath. You can spray um, around where your valve connects to the manifold and you're looking for any kind of bubbles. Um, and a matter of fact, now that, I, now that I say this out loud, you don't have the gas valves on at all. You just have the gas supply on so that you're pressurizing the system, spraying your water and soap mixture around all these connections and looking for any kind of uh, uh, bubbles that might appear that would indicate you have some sort of a gas leak. Um, and if you do have a gas leak, then this is the time to make sure that your connections are tight, that you have some sealant around the connections. Um, if you have any kind of seals that have failed or whatever at the valves, this is the time to correct that and fix that. Uh, I don't have any leaks, so I'm good to go on that, on that part. So now the next step is to pull the burner out. Now this is kind of important. There's different information out there that says different things. Let me tell you what I found. The burner is held in place in the back by a hex screw. This has got a hex screw with a slot in the center. So you can either use a socket or a flathead screwdriver to pull this out. This is not very tight. It's not meant to be tight. It's not meant to cinch the burner down. In fact, with the screw in place, you can move the burner around slightly. The burner is meant to free float. This screw just keeps it from popping up and out of place. Now, some people have commented that over time, this screw can get seized inside your grill body and you hit it with a socket and you end up breaking the screw. And if you do that, you got problems. You either got to tap that thing out, drill it out, tap it out, put a new screw or whatever. So my suggestion would be to take a flathead screwdriver and just with your arm strength that way, that way try to unscrew this thing before you try to hit it with a socket or something and, and risk breaking it. Um, for me, I got lucky, and all three of them just came right out. N not seized, nothing. They came out with, with little effort. Um, if yours is super tight, you know, stop. Maybe spray it down with uh, some, some of that Blast Off or WD-40 to try to get this thing unseized because um, it can be a little bit of a mess if you end up breaking it. But mine came right out, which brings me to another point. Earlier, I told you I was going to be using this engine lube anti-seize. That's what I'm going to be using this for. I'm going to put some of this anti-seize stuff on these threads before I put this screw back in when I reassemble this. So that way, um, I don't run the risk in the future of having this thing seize inside there. So that's what's going on there. Okay, so you've got your screws out. The next thing that we need to do is we need to disconnect. We need to get these wires loose and out of the way. Each one of your burners will have one wire, and the center burner has two wires because it has the ground, as I said earlier. So you'll have a wire going in and connecting to each one of the burners. And then there's these plastic clips that kind of hold the wires out of the way, okay? So you can just simply just kind of loosen these, you know, spread out these plastic clips and get the wires disconnected and loose from those plastic clips. I'll tell you about this blue tape here in a second. With the burner loose back here and I'm able to lift it up, I can just gently slide it out and slide those wires right out with it and you've got this assembly, okay? So then the next step is to take this uh, igniter electrode off of the burner and get that out of the way. The ground wire um, is on here with a tab and you can pull it off or you can leave it connected so you remember that that's the middle, doesn't matter. But here's how this kind of works. This, these metal tabs here, there's two metal tabs. This back one you might notice, kind of might be hard to see, but it's kind of bent forward and that helps lock the electrode into place. If I kind of pull back on it a little bit, it releases the electrode. And now I can just pull the electrode out the front I can keep pulling it until I pull the connection out of the hole and now my electrode is disconnected. So I'm going to set that aside. This is, by the way, what I'm going to be replacing on my grill because of that burner not working uh, correctly. 
I'm going to replace the, all the electrodes. I know I've got one bad one. So I just went ahead and bought the kit um, from grillparts.com that's going to replace all of these um, electrodes. So I'm waiting for those parts and I'm waiting uh, for that stainless steel uh, flavor bar kit to come as well. And then I'll be able to put my grill back together. Um, this kit for replacement electrodes on grillparts.com was $20. Just for an extra $10, you get the whole kit that includes the new igniter as well as a replacement cap. So I just went ahead and spent the extra 10 bucks. I'm getting all of the components. Okay, so that's your electrode. And we're going to set that aside. Now, if I want to pull this piece off, and you don't necessarily have to, you can pull the ground wire off of here, but I wanted to take this connector off. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be getting new ones with the kit or if I'm going to have to reuse these or what. And so let me show you how these, this is locked into place. This little metal thing doesn't want to come off here. So let me show you how to do that. I'll show you on one that's already apart. On the burner side itself, it might be hard to see, but right here is a little outward protruding uh, dimple in the center between these two metal kind of clips. There's a little dimple that, that's outward protruding. And on this little metal assembly that slides in like so underneath those two tabs, there, it has a hole in it. Well, when you slide it forward and over that dimple, it'll lock it. That's what locks this thing in place. So to get it out, just using a small screwdriver, sticking it between the plate, um, this, this plate that you're trying to move and the burner plate and just kind of very lightly pry and get that dimple to release from that hole. And then this slides out and out of the way. Okay, so that's how that works. So now your burners are off and out of the way. Inspect your burners. These burners, um, my burners are five years old and they're in pretty good shape. Uh, you shouldn't have any roll uh, rust holes through the burner. If you do, before you rush out and spend money on them, um, contact Weber. I've heard, and I don't, uh, I don't know this for sure, I haven't confirmed this, but I've heard that these carry a 10 year warranty. So before you rush out and replace this burner set, I would contact Weber and see what they have to say. But really, you don't need to unless you've got rust holes burned through or these are damaged in some way. Um, they will be dirty when you take them out. So what I did is I just took a wire brush and brushed the heck out of this thing. And then I took a uh, one of that Scotch-Brite pad and went even further and, and kind of semi-sanded it. And then... When I was all done, I took my air compressor with some compressed air and I blew out all these holes and I stuck my air compressor down in this hole and blew all this out. Also, you've got a screen here. Um, you can brush out with a, with a, like a toothbrush or a nylon brush or just blow it out with air. There is a screw here to adjust this opening. If you can see, there's an opening there that allows oxygen or air into the tube with the gas mixture to make sure that you have the right flame. These are preset by the factory, so you really shouldn't have to mess with that. But if you have a flame that doesn't look like it should, um, and you can go online and see videos and pictures of what your flame should look like, and there's a description inside your owner's manual about what a good burning flame should look like. If you don't have a good burning flame, you can loosen up this screw and turn this cap to open or close the air hole to allow more or less air into the fuel mixture. But you're not supposed to have to. They're set at the factory. You should be able to leave it alone. So blow it all out with compressed air. Get it all cleaned up. And you're good to go. Set it aside. Now the grill is pretty much um, apart on the top end as much as I really want to take it apart. I have no reason to take my manifold off or to take any of these valves off of the system at this point. I've got no leaks. I've got nothing broke. Everything's working. So I don't have a reason to take this off. If you had to take your valves off and replace it, there's just one little screw on the underside of the valve. You unscrew that and this comes off. If you wanted to replace the whole manifold, which I can't imagine why anybody would, um, but if you did need to, there's a, a bolt inside here and a screw on each end that, 
that you would take out and this whole manifold would come out. Again, really no reason to take this off. I can't imagine why anybody would take this off. Um, there just there just isn't any reason to do it. There shouldn't be anything wrong with your with your valves or your manifold um, as far as that goes. They're not really a part that, that wears. Um, so now that I've got that all apart, I'll take my various uh, scrapers and I'll start scraping the big heavy grease and food debris and, and junk down uh, off the sides of this thing, getting, getting the big bulky stuff out of here. And when I'm satisfied with that and I've got as much kind of scraped off as I can with my scraper, then I can take this bottom, slide this bottom catch pan out of there and this will be full of garbage. Mine was packed full of grease and food debris. Anyways, you can take that out to your garbage can and dump all that stuff out and set that aside. Then of course down inside here or from the front, whichever way, you can grab your drip pan. There's a drip pan inside there. It's a little aluminum pan. Weber sells these little inserts that fit right in, which is kind of nice. So when this drip pan gets full, you just take it out, throw it away, clean this up a little bit, put a new one in. So we've got our drip pan, we can set that aside. So now I'm disassembled about as much as I want to be, and um, there's really nothing else for me to take apart at this point other than to just start cleaning this thing. Um, one thing that I do want to note, I mean, these are pretty good grills, and they're not cheap, and, and quality-wise, it's it's great grill. It's been a great grill for me for a long time, for well, for five years so far. Um, so it's not surprising that those flavor bars are rotted and igniters do go bad. But um, one thing that's unfortunate about these grills and, and all, quite frankly, all grills is the whole chassis and cabinet on the bottom, all of this sheet metal. On all the grills, they tend to be thin, kind of cheap sheet metal, and they do start to rust over time. And uh, mine... It's hard to, you can't really see, it's too dark down here in the bottom, but I'm starting to see a little bit of surface rust on the outside. Also, if you kind of look down inside that hole, if you can see it, um, there's kind of where I'm, where I'm pointing, there's some paint that's uh, flaking off back there on the bottom, and it's starting to bubble a little bit. So, you know, I can tell that I'm at the beginning stages of having this bottom cabinet start to, uh, to rust. Um, you know, at some point I'm hoping to get another good five years out of it. Who knows? I may have to take this bottom cabinet all apart and then I have to decide if it's worth the effort and the money to sand that thing all down or have it sandblasted and repainted or, you know, maybe after 10 years of use, it's just time to go buy another grill. But if I remember correctly, this was a six or $700 grill. So I'm hoping to get a lot more than five years out of it. Okay, so anyways, now I've got it completely disassembled. I'm going to take it out to the grass area or put tarps down or whatever and start cleaning it. Before I do that, now if you notice, I've got some blue tape around the ends, and I'm going to just go ahead and take it off because I've already cleaned this grill, but I've got blue tape around the ends of my valves. Um, I don't want any grease or garbage or anything to get inside the little orifice that's on the backside that, that would prevent the gas flow from coming out so I've, I put some uh, tape over the top of those while I was cleaning the grill. So now, with the grill outside and some tarps down, I'm going to start laying on the easy off. And I had to do this about three times just to get it to the condition that it's in right now. I don't expect it to be perfectly clean like brand new. You can see there's some stains here that just aren't going to come out. Um, and, you know, short of taking a power sander or a wire wheel or something in here, if you're really that neurotic about it, you're not going to get this thing perfectly clean. But nonetheless, I'm spraying it all down with the Easy Off. I sprayed down all of my other components, the rack, the uh, bottom heat shields, the, um, you know, the pan that was inside there. Of course, the underside of the hood that I took off. All of that gets sprayed down and I'm out in the yard with my garden hose just spraying the heck out of this thing. Um, when I'm all done with that and I've sprayed and, and you have to be careful with Easy Off by the way. You don't want to get it all over the place and on the outside because it does stain and it will stain uh, the paint. So be careful how much of that stuff you, you know, that you're not spraying it everywhere. 
Um, after I was done getting easy off in there, I had to do it, like I said, I don't know, about three times. Um, then I would take my mild soap and my uh, kind of scratch-free um, sponge that I showed you earlier. And I just kind of cleaned up the whole outside of the grill uh, using that sponge and some mild soap. Um, when you're rubbing on your stainless steel surfaces, like the side panels, try to go in the direction of the grain of the steel. Uh, if you look closely at it, you'll see that the stainless steel has a, has a grain or a direction, and you want to go in the, in the same um, direction as that so that you don't have all these side scratches. This grill's five years old, and I've used it a lot, so it's got some scratches and stuff. Um, I guess it gives it character. So... What else? After that, I've got it nice and clean. I got it dried out. When I put this thing back together, I'm not going to put food on it immediately. I've got to fire this thing up, get it nice and hot, check that my flame is, is the color and, and shape that it should be, and really burn off some of this chemical. That easy off stuff is, is nasty. You might even consider wearing some sort of a mask when you're spraying it or be in a well-vented, ventilated area because it does get kind of nasty. But... Um, but, uh, you know, light up your grill and let it burn for a little while with some nice uh, warm heat to get all that chemical stuff out of there. Some people uh, even talk about wiping down the inside of the grill with like a baking grease to kind of condition it. Um, certainly you can put some sort of a, I don't know if that does anything or is necessary, but I do put some vegetable oil on my, on my uh, cooking grates um, before I go to do that. And... That's the gist of it. So basically, at this point, you'll start to reassemble it, reassemble in, in the same order that you took it apart. I'm not going to reassemble again because I've got some parts on order uh, that I'm waiting for. But that is, uh, that is pretty much the gist of the grill. Again, if you have any kind of gas leaks or problems with the valve or the manifold or the hoses, this is all exposed once you take that front cover off everything's right there so again for me and the problem that I had I'm going to be replacing all of these um, electrodes and I'm going to go ahead and replace the the new uh, igniter since it comes with the kit and hopefully that'll deal with my uh, lighting issue that and the fact that I've really gone to gone the extra effort of cleaning up my burners and so forth that should hopefully take care of of, uh, of the lighting issue. This um, job is not super hard and it doesn't take a lot of knowledge or tools, um, but it's physical, it's dirty. Uh, this was, you know, to get it to this point where it was cleaned up and taken apart, I probably worked on the grill for about, oh, three or four hours. Um, so, and, it, and, it's, and it's a dirty job with all the grease and stuff if you use your grill regularly. So. Um, not for the faint of heart, but not overly complicated, and it doesn't take a lot of specialty tools to do uh, what I've done with this grill. So hopefully that helps you out. Again, I know I'm not, take, I'm not putting the grill back together but, uh, in this video, but it really is just a matter of reversing the steps that I've shown you to take it apart, making sure, you know, these are your critical components for the burn. So just making sure that when you do put your um, when you do put your burners back in place, that you have them you know positioned correctly. You've got the burner hole has got to go over the uh, orifice of the hole in the valve. So you're sliding that in and basically just setting down your burner. It's locked in place in the back. If you've got that step down and you've got the wires tucked away where they're supposed to be, that's the, the most technical part of the entire grill. Everything else is just putting those components back in place like I showed you before. So it's not overly complicated, just a little dirty. All right, hopefully that helped you out. And if you have any questions, go ahead and uh, shoot me a message. Thanks. Hey guys, one thing I forgot to mention in the uh, previous segment. Early on, I showed you this dielectric grease that I have. Uh, what you can do with this is you can like, you know, to squeeze it out like toothpaste and put it inside your connectors here. 
That'll prevent um, moisture and corrosion from happening. And you can put it inside the connectors on this side. And you can also just put a little bit on the, uh, the you know, try to jam a little bit of it inside the connector end of the electrode um, or where that uh, ground wire connects to this, uh, to this uh, center burner. Um, and again, that just prevents some corrosion and some moisture from getting into those. It's a little overkill. You don't have to do it, but I tend to do things a, a little bit overkill. So there you go.